Hey, good morning everyone. I'm Sarah from Helping Babies Sleep. And I'm in my car today because I got caught visiting with a little, a gorgeous little newborn and, and didn't have time to make it back to my desk. So I'm doing this Facebook Live uh, on the go. And today we're going to talk about pacifiers. When, why, and how to wean. So pacifiers have many names. Soothers, uh, Binky, Fussbug, lots of different um, descriptions to describe uh, you know, what a pacifier is. And, you know, lots of discussion out there about is it, are they good or are they bad? And just like many things in parenting, there is no black and white answer. Um, it's really a gray area that coincides with your personal choice. But I do want to talk about some of the yays and nays associated with pacifiers. So one of the, you know, some of the things you may hear is do, do pacifiers cause nipple confusion? Um, do they, are they a sleep crutch? And so let's talk about that a little bit. So the one great yay for pacifiers in the newborn stage is that they, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends them as something that can help reduce SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. So that's a good thing, a good reason why you should be using pacifiers. We also know research shows us that sucking, the act of sucking happens in utero. So it's a very natural, very soothing action. Uh, that can help your newborn child or your older child. The other thing is that the act of sucking stimulates something called peristalsis in your intestine, and that's the action of your small intestine contracting and moving through food through your stomach. So if you have a child with a sensitive stomach, using a pacifier will help you know push that food through and ease those stomach pains. And that is also a yay, a very good thing. As far as nipple confusion goes, there's, when I did my research, there was a mix of results about whether or not they cause nipple confusion. And the most, research, the most recent research out of the University of Chicago shows that giving a pacifier does not have any impact on breastfeeding outcomes. And so that's a big yay as well. And anecdotally, I can tell you that my son was given a pacifier from day one in the, in the NICU, and he was very, very well breastfed and weighed 20 pounds by four months. So him having had a pacifier at the early days of his life did not influence our breastfeeding outcomes. Obviously not a large sample size, but anecdotal, and you can correlate that with the research out of the University of Chicago. So when we're talking about the, the drawbacks of pacifiers, they come into play more when we're talking about long-term use of a pacifier. So long-term use. So it's, there's evidence to show that children who suck on pacifiers regularly have a higher incidence of ear infections, which is kind of a bummer. What's interesting about that study, and I'll be posting the links to these studies in the comments later, is that um, thumb suckers don't show that same incidence of, of ear infections, which is kind of interesting. The other bummer about pacifiers long term is dental malocclusion, which is really deformation of your teeth. And, you know, that can be a concern. I mean, there is always braces later on, but it's always great to be proactive as well. And another nay maybe that might be considered about pacifiers is, is it a sleep crutch? Is it something that your child needs, something external that he or she needs to fall asleep and that she can't fall asleep without? And you know, some people can use pacifiers without many major problems. They don't have to get up every, you know, two or three hours and reinsert the pacifier. And then there's other people that, you know, may struggle with that, like I did. So again, it's that gray area. You have to wait and see what happens in your particular situation. Some things to consider with the use of pacifiers is that um, dental malocclusion, or the impact on your teeth, happens generally after the age of two, meaning that if you're going to use a pacifier, you could use it pretty pretty um, inconsequentially up until the age of two, and at that point you might want to consider removing the pacifier. And the other consideration, as I mentioned before, is that sleep crutch. Can your child put that sleep crutch back in his mouth or her mouth in the middle of the night? That is the question. Um, I couldn't find it, but I have remember reading about a study that showed that after seven months, children can reinsert the pacifier. In my experience, when I do sleep training with parents, I encourage them to just get rid of it completely. And here's why. When your child 
you know, the sucking motion of that pacifier is what helps your child relax so that she can drift off into sleep. It's kind of like motion, like being on a train. You know, if you've ever been on a train for a long time, it can make you very drowsy. And the, the act of sucking on the pacifier is the same, the same um, action. All humans wake up in the night. Babies, you and I, and you and I may reposition ourselves or take a quick peek at the clock and then roll back over and go back to sleep. But the child who has a pacifier, who's addicted, to the, who needs it to fall asleep, when they wake up in the middle of the night, if it's not in their mouth, they will cry out and require it back in their mouth to help relax them down. They're trained that that's the, how they fall asleep. And so if they can't find it, you're going to have to get out of bed and go back in and, and put that in. Can they find it themselves? Can you litter it around the crib? So the research showed that after seven months, kids can find it and reinsert it. However, I have tried this with different clients who are really attached and didn't want to lose the pacifier. And what I have found is that it takes so much effort and concentration for your child to actually find the pacifier in the crib that they are completely woken up. And then it takes that much longer for them to get back to sleep. And so I, I don't encourage, you know, if someone's going to do sleep training, I say just get rid of the pacifier altogether. And then they often say, well, I can't go grocery shopping without that pacifier. I need that. Otherwise, he or she is, you know, really unhappy in the grocery store. The thing about the pacifier during the day is that it's masking something else, right? It's a soother. It's soothing something else. And what is that thing that's really bothering your child? Is it fatigue that your child is overtired? Or is it hunger that your child wants to eat, right? And do you really want to be masking that with a pacifier? You know, every now and again, I can see how you need to do that. But on a regular day-to-day -day basis, wouldn't you rather meet your child's true needs? And not only that, but over and over again, I find that when, child, when children are sleep trained, they are much, much less fussy during the day. In fact, I have an intake form and it says, you know, please describe your child's temperament. And p parents always describe their kids as, as happy. And then after the sleep training, they always say to me, oh my gosh, I can't believe just how much happier and well rested he is since we did the sleep training. I'm so glad we did this. So a couple thoughts there on, on pacifiers. Now, if you want to get rid of the pacifier, how do you do that? And basically, there's kind of like two methods. The first one is to go cold turkey, which is kind of like rip off the band-aid and get rid of it all together. And you would do that in alignment with when you start your sleep training plan. Because when you take away that sleep crutch, that's when your child will be forced to try and find another mechanism to help self-soothe. And self-soothing actions are things like sucking on a thumb or sleeping in a certain position or rubbing um, her head in the ba back of her head in a mattress. Okay, things like that. And until that sleep crutch is gone, those skills will not, will not develop. So you could go cold turkey, just rip the band-aid off and have a couple rough days and then things get dramatically better. Often it's the anxiety leading up to taking those things away that is actually worse than implementing it. The second way you could do things is more of like a fading technique. And by fading, I'm thinking, you know, if you have a newborn and you're using the um, pacifier to help her calm, before she's asleep, try and get that pacifier out of her mouth so that she's used to not having something in her mouth when she's falling asleep. And then, so then when she wakes up, she doesn't think, oh, where did that thing go? She already knew it was gone. That's fading. And the other aspect of fading is where you allow your child to use the pacifier only at certain times. So maybe it's just bedtime or just naps. And often people use this with toddlers. And to be honest, I don't think it's very, I think it's really hard on kids because it's hard for them to comprehend that I get it sometimes, but not others. That doesn't really make sense. And then, you know, that boundary between when she gets it and when she doesn't get it can get particularly cloudy. Let's say she fell and had a, has a little bobo and wants some soothing. Do you go and get the pacifier out of the bedroom to offer it then or not? It gets into gray areas. And so I think it's often easier just to have a line that you, you know, you don't really cross. Um, another way with toddlers, if you're getting into that two, two and a half and you want to get rid of it, is to cut a little hole in the end of it. And this is the suction of the, the pacifier that's rewarding. And when you have a hole in it, there's no suction because the air can travel through. And so it doesn't give the same pleasure as, um, you know, being a, a closed circuit would. So start cutting a hole in it. Or, the, you know, maybe the pacifier fairy comes. There's something your child's motivated to have. That's more of a rewards type scenario which I don't, you know, love overall, but I think for short-term habit-breaking things, it can be helpful. So there you go. A bunch of different information on the yays and nays of pacifiers, the good things and the bad things, and like everything, you know, no judgment. Whatever is working for you, 
works for you. And when it stops working, then that's the time that it's, you know, maybe you want to think about, about making a change. Thanks for watching.